Everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Zeke Garcia, hello. I'm Sam Healy, what's up? I just realized I didn't have a hat on. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get one very good. Go get one. Just step out. You do it all That's the time anyway. Come I don't. On, just do it. Behind the scenes. Woo! Welcome to Board Game Breakfast. No, Z isn't chewing on the wires. Yeah, we had the new Mac update. It's flummoxing us. Catalina. Um, we keep finding out right before we start when these things happen. Fortunately... We were able to, um, fortunately we were able to, we, we had the show running. Yeah. So, it's just. New so updates, a little iffy. Yeah, there's a, you, we're here, we're here. We're going to find you, Apple. Okay. So anyway, uh, welcome now, to Board Game Breakfast. You. This is a, a live show. We do, we talk about board games as well as a pile of contributors. Yeah. Uh, we are preparing in one week from today, at this very moment, we will be at Essen in Essen because um with the convention with going. the time change yeah right so it would pop it it would have to be hard it would be hard to be at essen while not in essen though it's like a frame of mind thing sometimes i'm at essen without being there <laughs> and you could be at essen and not there in the uh, convention center you could be at the city of essen oh that's true i guess Anyhow, what I meant is Essen will be going on. We will be a in the convention. city, and the convention yeah. will be occurring around us. I will be consuming possibly a spiral potato. Have you done that ever? Nope. A spiral but, you know, potato. I want to try new things. We were with Jason last week, and he went berserk because we saw one at Universal, yeah, and we were Universal. like, you know, we're these are in be, Germany. They'll be and he, right he there. was mind-boggled. He had never seen one there. Huh? How They're everywhere. They're everywhere. <laughs> How have you not walked through the convention and seen somebody eating a little spiral because potato? Because he's a one, or, or he's a one guy. That he looks at games only. I guess so. Yeah. He's like, I mean, oh, people were, were eating them all night at at in Orlando at a Universal too. So I don't. Well, he huh. really wanted one. How can he? Um, well, anyhow, I it's uh, Essen. We're excited about that. We have booths and stuff. Uh, we're doing. We did one video yesterday about top ten games that we know are going to be good at Essen. Yes. Today we're talking about top ten games we hope are good. Our Predictions for games that we are hoping will be enjoyable and Excited fun. Excited about, yes. That'll be later today at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we're going to get started with this show. As always, we start with the news. Yeah. All righty. Well, there is a ton of news this week. All so right. we're just going to jump right into that. First of all. Um, it's working. I don't actually know. That's what exciting. Uh? Oh, I have no notes this week. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> that's another thing that's, that's happened here. Okay, so I'm just going to have to go by the pictures and remember the news story. Oh, that's fun. This is like, there's an extra game this week. <laughs> by the way, if you want to... Do you got 10 for 10 coming up? And right now, recall the news. I wonder if this is another. I wonder if this is another thing the update has done, where it doesn't dump your it, it dump writing? the notes. I sure hope not. Okay. I, I did want to mention that by the way, the new update, which I did do, uh, deleted all my uh, videos for next week. So sorry, but I <laughs> also it, it, it clocked in vacation for me, so I'll be off next week. Catalina, you evil update you. Uh. Well, the good news is we only update. I think we only put it on one of our computers, right? But it happens to be this one. Okay. All right. I, I, I think I remember all the news. Here we go. Uh, these three companies, Reality Games, Dorahami Games, and Rumors Games, are all from Iran. And all three of these uh, companies, at least as far as I know, uh, were... Um, banned from Germany, not Essen. I was about to say Essen. Essen has no they problem were, with the company. They were denied visas. They were denied visas. So this is a big deal going on right now. They're trying to get it resolved. Lots of people involved, but I don't know how it's going to work. I know they said like one person got a visa from one of the companies, an American, but That's gonna be a busy running a booth right at a con and they even had a, a panel. And I thought, panels at Essen. So I went and looked. There's three panels at Essen this year, Ooh. and that's one of them. Wow. So... 
Yep. Hopefully all that gets resolved. Riot Games. Uh, in one of their streams on Twitch, briefly they mentioned, we're going to be doing all kinds of stuff, and blah, 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 and board games, blah, blah, blah. It was like a very bloop. And they showed this picture of what looks to be an incredibly boring board game. <laughs> I'm hoping it's more interesting than that picture looks. Uh, I don't know what I'm looking at. That's so. a board game with discs. All right, I'm going to cool. I'm going to pause oh, here to to talk about some of these comments here. First of all, this person said, uh, "Tom never heard of a pen and piece of paper." That's baloney. I use pen and paper all the time, but I also didn't know my notes were not going to show up here. Why would I duplicate? Why, why would you take notes? Why twice? would you duplicate your work? Secondly. Catalina is working fine in the computer, just a lot of programs it's not working with. Audacity does not work with Catalina at this point in time, as we learned. Neither does Levelator. Those are two programs we use. So, And apparently, it neither does like our program notes. that mimics this and shoots it onto your screen. So yes. we're going to figure these things out slowly. Just want me to see if not now. Print out the huh? Notes. No, no. So far, I got two out of two. That'll, but he had. He said there was a lot of news. <laughs> there was a lot. Well, I can literally step out, walk ten feet, and get them printed. Actually, out for you. I wonder if I can look at it there. Pull the notes up on this computer, and I'll yeah, watch. This is called. And I'll watch the chat on my phone outside. And I, I'm gonna prep for that vacation. Well, anyway, the next, the next thing is. <laughs> oh wait, the notes are back. So okay. What? No, I got the notes now. Chris, you're too late. God, <laughs> you, Chris, thank you, Chris. <laughs> always two steps behind, like the no, Popo no, in no. action movies. You're fine. No, Chris, Chris is amazing. Soon as Stallone no, that's <laughs> takes out the bad guy, then the cops show Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> okay, so that is true. The cops always show up later. Okay, Babylonia, lead your clan to prosperity in Reiner Knizia's Babylonia. This is a new game from Reiner Knizia. You feel it seems, seems like you're reading now. I like the old style better. <laughs> Anyhow, this is, again, another game set in the land between Tigers and Euphrates. Are you and serious? This is another one of those types of games? I don't know. I'm looking at it. It looks a little bit like Tigers and Euphrates. It looks a little bit like Blue Lagoon. But the one thing is, this looks like an actual decent-sized game. As a, he puts out, He's been putting out little, 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 little games. Sure. Um, you're trying to play clan tokens, score surrounded cities and ziggurats. It sounds like part three, honestly. Interesting. Uh, he's got a couple of big games coming out this year, actually, which is rare for Knizia. He, you know, like you said, he does not come up with a lot of these. And this is one. There's another game with uh, pagodas. You're building pagodas, which I believe is from him. It also also looks like a decently sized game. He also has a really dinky game, too. Uh, a lot of them. Ecosystem. This is a new game from Genius Games. So the folks who make all the science games. And yeah. this one, uh, they're making a biological derived card drafting game. Uh, this is coming out uh, November 20th. It says they're releasing it on November 20th. So they're not kickstarting this one. Oh, it's only retailing for 15 bucks. Maybe that's why. Okay. It's a smaller one. But it sounds cool. I like drafting games in particular. I like building your own ecosystem. It sounds cool. I like the artwork. It doesn't look like there's a lot of text on the cards, though. So I'm curious how that's going to work. That's neat. Yeah. Uh, this who one knows? Is, honestly, of all the games they put out, which I know are very good for what the company does, what they do is they do well. This one looks really appealing, visually appealing also. This might be one I, I have to jump on. Yeah. All right, new game or new expansion from uh, the Tasty Minstrel Games, uh, the G uh, Wards of London. It's an expansion for Guilds of London, and it just adds more stuff. All right, cool. All right. Also, Arkham Horror heads to the dark side of the moon. A new card pack that Z already knew about, so don't pretend. No, it didn't. Why? Oh, you didn't? What is this called? Dark Side of the Moon. Apparently in this one, Virgil Gray, whoever that is, has been transported to the moon. And you're in this game, you're on the moon trying to... Trying to go to a Pink Floyd concert. Find Virgil Gray and get off the moon. This is a mythos pack, which means it's just a continuation of the latest arc. The latest arc is, it picks up from the story from a thousand shapes of horror. Yeah, so it's the Dream Eaters arc. It's, okay. Yes. All you right. need to have the Dream Eaters. I thought this was a standalone, what they call a scenario pack. But yeah, this is a continuation of Dream Eaters, which is like the fourth standalone arc by now. Get on that, people. If you're not playing this game, that's okay. But you're a sucker. Alrighty. Next <laughs> one is 
Medici the Dice Game. Yeah. This one I was not expecting. <laughs> uh, it's oh. another Canizia. And Sam, artwork by Vincent Dutrait, so Sam will automatically like it. No. You like Medici, I will automatically right? think it looks good, but I will not automatically like the I game. don't think Sam's ever played There's Medici, and I feel Did you play very Medici? confident he no. would hate it. Did you play it. Medici the card game? No. Did you play Medici the dice game? No. Did you play Medici <laughs> Shut up. the OG? <laughs> go, to, go to Italy. This is the third in end of the series. This is a dice drafting roll and write game by Canizia. Um, also, Kaching! All right, moving on. Ooh, that's no, that's what it is. Let's not lie to ourselves. I like that. Kaching, the card game. Machorama! Oh, this I is from hate that name. The Op. In this game, you have a category. So, like, the category might be local sports teams okay. or classes you hated in high school. Yes. Everyone's writing down answers that you think other people will say. AP Biology. Sure. Awkward silence. <laughs> Why is that such a weird thing? I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how many people you think took you AP Biology. I took Didn't it. Didn't you say Did local you really? sports yeah. teams? Why? Because I could. Okay, anyhow. It turned out you I are... really couldn't. <laughs> hey, well, AP anything is hard. I, I thought biology was hard. several AP classes that did fine. Biology, though, that class whooped me up one side and down the other. What is analysis paralysis biology? Okay, so anyhow... <laughs> All right, I'll give you that. You, 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 that. Um, this is why later on you can just watch Dice Tower Digest, which is the news without the nonsense. So, wow, words can hurt. They, they were meant you know, to you know, hurt. You know what else hurts? <laughs> AP Biology. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Anyhow, in this game, you're trying to predict, as people say their answers around the table. The spread before the answer you wrote down is done. Okay. So if you wrote AP Biology and you think, well, someone in the next three players will mention it, then you'd say between one and three. You get fewer points the bigger your spread. Sure, okay. Sounds interesting. I guess so. I guess so. Okay. How many things are you writing down, I wonder? I don't know. It seems like you're just writing down one. Seems like a really big group game. But... Four to eight. Okay. All right. Exploding Kittens. Heard of it. Has been bought <gasps> by TCG Capital Management for thirty million. So TCG, huh? So here's how you get rich. That's unfortunate. Write a comic. Yes. Make the comic popular. Yes. Make a a a, board, a card game that makes oodles of money. I think it's the number one Kickstarter ever. Okay. Then get thirty million dollars invested in your company. Anyway, that's, that I think that's like kind of cool, right? You know, it's a neat thing. Plans of success. This yeah. is the company also made Throw Throw a Burrito, Bears vs. Babies, and exploded. On the Scale from 1 to T-Rex, which is coming out soon. That's right. And they even, they're starting their own convention, Burning Cat. This is coming out in May 2020 so in Portland. In the middle of the desert? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's a giant cat you light on fire. That's totally what I thought, too. When he said Burning Cat, I'm like, all right. <laughs> so the, they said the money for this investment will be used to develop more games, expand its IP into live events, and... So we're about to get an Exploding Kittens movie, aren't we? From the people that brought you Sonic's teeth. <laughs> All right. Era is one of the hot games from Gen Con that came out from uh, Edgar Spiel and Matt Leacock. It's a roll and build game. It wasn't a sure. right. Whatever. It's a roll and right game but with cool pieces. However, the boards were not quite so amazing. So, they have heard this and they're releasing stickers to put on the board itself and this mat you can put in the middle of the table that you put all the buildings on when you're putting them on your board. Alright. Uh, yeah, I know. But we painted ours. Or when I say we painted them, Sam painted them. It um, wasn't that difficult. Base coat, dry brush. I found Very that simple. completely difficult. So anyway, so Sam painted the figures. Um, but the stickers are okay, although I found that in my experience, stickers do not stick well to these kind of plastic things. So I'm hoping so. I hope it also doesn't look too bad. The mat in the middle the table, that I like a, a lot. Bit of a textured finish? Didn't the boards have a little bit of a textured finish? So they've got to be really good stickers. Yeah, we'll find out. Nah, the mat, cool. though, is good because the way the game we'll works see. is as you pull buildings, when there's a group of buildings gone, it's one of, as different buildings go, that's one of the triggers to the game. 
and I was always like, oh, that building's gone. You get that. So help this will help with that a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's cool. That's a cool thing. It says they have heard the mandate of the people. <laughs> We have heard Got the it. mandates of the people. Sit Down has announced a whole pile of stuff coming out at Essen. So some of it we talked about before. We talked about the uh, Magic Maze on Mars. And there's a Magic Maze Hidden Rolls, which I don't care about at all. Cause yes, yes, yes. That's, but there's a couple other games. Palm Readers, one Z is super pumped about. I'm not. It seems really <laughs> awkward. However, I am pumped about Space Bowl. And I talked about it on a uh, video I put up yesterday mentioning five games for big groups that you can get at Spiel. Again, like a speculation list. Well, Palm Reader could also be for big groups. It is, I think. It's definitely for large groups. Palm but Reader's you're drawing really stuff on somebody else's palm next to you and they pass a telephone game, but I get to touch you. <laughs> okay. And the Space Bowl seems cool. It's like Robo, not Robo Rally, but what's the other one? Ricochet Robot, like quickly doing something. And you take marbles and uh, some discs, you throw them in this little 3x3 three three grid, mm -hmm. and then you try to find that pattern of planets on a grid of cards that show different planets. Oh, I like that idea a lot. And each card has a bunch of planets, so you're like, oh, okay, I see that exact pattern over here. And then when you find it, you're like, go, and everybody else has 10 more seconds to find it. It's that. It's a speed game. But a visual, like, you know, discernity one. You don't like it? Palm reader for I you? don't know that sit, uh, sit Down is a company for Sam. Let's talk about Wormlord. Wormlord is a worm army, worm versus worm. The way this works is there's worm. strings all over the table, and you tie them in a loose knot and put them on a battlefield, and you defeat your enemies by picking it up and untying the knot. You can only have one worm in your hand at a time. <laughs> I, I love that rule. That's got to be my favorite rule. I need to find this rule book and quote it. Okay, what about but house flippers. Does house flippers. Look, what is that going to be? Which Sam is? Because that's the only one that looks good out of this entire lot. It's so a far. simultaneous action selection game where income is managed by a collection of sand timers that represent time to generate income. <laughs> when the sand timer runs out, players collect their income, and then you can renovate property which you sell at a higher cost. Or you can buy a rental property, which gives you another sand timer that also generates income. You can hire an interior decorator to double the income from a sand timer. You keep flipping properties, get it? Sand timers, mm -hmm. until you have enough income to reach a golden retirement. I actually think this sounds good. It's a 10 minute game. I'm very intrigued by it. But I, I will say, I think, the, I think Sam will play none of these. <laughs> Am I correct? Possibly. Have you played Magic Maze? No. I don't know. You might like that. No? Okay. All right. No. Beach of Palooza card battling game. This is, I think, the first titles. Steven Universe <laughs> themed careful. game. Uh, I like Steven Universe. It's a little, it's a cartoon, I think, for kids. I'm not sure who it's for. It's, it's a real it's funky for cartoon. It's for humans. One of the things I think interesting is Erica Boyaris, the one of the designers, usually designs with Daryl Anders, but uh, this time she's with Andrew Wolf designing this game. She did... Um that lion game. Roar. Roar. Thank but she you. did that with Daryl Andrews. Right. She did. Yeah, I'm saying normally they work together as a, as a team of designers. So this is a different team. She's with Andrew Wolf, who has done a lot of stuff, I think, with uh, Aiden, uh, Thanos Crypto Rising. Zone. That's his game. Okay. Well, this is cool. Um, you're taking the role of Steven, three to six players, well, alternate versions from different timelines. Okay. And he's putting together the best band and win the whole show. Yeah. Rock and roll. It sounds very much like the cartoon. All right. Expedition to New Dale. This one I'm very interested in. It's from Alexander Pfister. It's a sequel to Oh My Goods. Um, it takes place after one of the expansions of Oh My Goods. This is assuming you're following any kind of timeline story to a card game. Is there a timeline to Oh My Goods? Yes, apparently. It says it's five years set after the events of the Escape the Canyon Brook expansion. I'm sorry, that, that just seems ridiculous to me. Expedition, though. The Fister Goods Universe. This is a campaign story FGU. game. Eight chapters, 15 hours. You have a starting coal mine. I know that Fister's with a P. It's cool. This is actually a board game, it looks like. You can see some of the pictures there. Um, it's... All right. A much bigger game, looks like. So, yeah, this is a sequel and theme. This is not a card game. This is coming out at Essen? Interesting. That's really soon. I haven't heard this one get much buzz at all. 
Hang the on. age of Fister is over. <laughs> no, it's not. You heard it here first, folks. Alexander Fister retires from <laughs> board making. <laughs> board, from making? board making? <laughs> board making. <laughs> that's, how you, that's how you say it if you want to be classic. All right. Nino ah. Kuni 2, the board game. Say what? This is coming from Steamforged uh, Games. It's a one of four cooperative kingdom building game. Yes. And it looks cool, and that is about the extent I this know about it. This is from Steamforged Games? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, well, this they is do like video a completely games, so. different look. This is Nino Kuni, is obviously a video game, and they do, uh, that's what they did the last time, right? It's obviously. A video I don't, what's game? their last game they've done? Uh, Dark, Dark uh, Souls. Uh, yeah, Demon or Dark Souls or whatever. Got it. They do that, they, I guess. They, they also work did with the um, the um, the futuristic kind of answer to battle. Yeah, that was Blood that Bowl, the the soccer game though. Yeah, it's, I can't remember what they call it. I have it. zero I interest in this. One. Hopefully, it's better than the Bloodborne game. You should Not play Bloodborne, the video game. Dark you Souls. Might like it. Well, no, video game might be fine. All right, Paolo Mori is making a game Blitzkrieg, a World War II game that takes place in twenty minutes. Um. Huh? Looks interesting. Don't look at me. Look at it, and you'll know why you shouldn't have looked at me. Yeah, it looks. I don't know. I mean, it looks like it might be an interesting game. Twenty minutes. World War Two was about twenty minutes. Okay. I'm actually very interested in it because I like Paul Amore. Me too, man. I have nothing against Paul Amore. That just doesn't look interesting. I don't know. I've heard you say some things about Paul Amore that. <laughs> no, he hasn't. Stop saying these things. Rio Grande has take them and run with several it. new things well, coming then out. Stop it, Internet. I'm obviously lying. <laughs> One of the things Rio Grande comes out is a new power grid expansion, Middle East and South Africa, which looks okay. pretty cool. And then they got a trio of games here. We got Queens, which Z has already reviewed. It's good stuff. Um, and then Butterfly, this is designed by Stephen Glenn, looks really cool in the picture. It looks like an abstract strategy style game. Okay. And The Way of the Bear, which we made fun of the first time it came out because it was called Wangdo. Wangdo. And I reviewed that as well. That one, uh, you know, I get, get, get Queens. That's good. I think The Way of the Bear sounds a little bit better. <laughs> it does. The, I mean, the title is a nice improvement. Yes. Is it the same theme, all these bears? Yeah, it's the same color. Oh, okay. different, uh, I'm assuming the game looks exactly the same except for the title. Well, maybe I would like it. Actually, the thing I'm most interested in is the new Power Grid expansion. That Butterfly game sounds neat. I do like Stephen Glenn's games, and he does not make very many of them. I wonder how Power Grid would work in the Middle East. Is like the oil track the whole thing? Uh, maybe. Who knows? Know. The market for that might be really interesting. Carcassonne! Has some maps coming out mm. for countries. This yeah, looks really cool. I this. am excited about this. This does look cool. This looks cool. So these are big giant mats that looks like you can start from multiple locations. This would really change how Carcassonne played. Yeah. If you're starting, forget the map, forget the history. That's cool in itself. But if you start from multiple spots, that would make the whole idea of I'm making this big city. You're like, me too. When are we going to meet? I think <laughs> it would be more interactive, actually. Because you can... I would be more like really come after somebody have fun else on their road because I'm going to finish my own and you're not going to be able to finish yours. Well, either way, and then they're historical. They look good. My only concern about these, they're made from high quality strong linen embossed paper, and they're A1 size, which uh, A1 is big, right? Isn't A1? So A4 is a typical one. A3 is double that. A2 would be double that. A1 would be double that. That's poster size, about. Um, but I'm worried about the paper, right? That linen paper, how do you store it? Yeah. Like if these were the neoprene mats, you can hang those, roll those. That would be amazing, but that would obviously be more pricey. I also wonder how they sell these to you there. In a I'm tube, I would I'm assume. assuming they're rolled up like a poster. Yeah, which means as soon as you get home, you got to unroll them so that they don't stay curled. Yeah. Because it's paper. But they're still a neat idea. They are cool. Yeah. But they also have Absolutely. ways to get points. If you notice around the edge Maybe of the map, you can get points by connecting roads to neighboring countries. Maybe they're folded? Oh, I would not like that. That would have creases on them. Yeah. I don't know. Well, that's a thing. I remember when they came out with those original Settlers of Catan maps. Those were folded sheets that you then put on the table. That just feels so ancient. <laughs> you know, I don't want to play okay. games like that. So, alrighty. That is all the news that's fit to print. Let's go to Kickstarter and War. Hello, fellow gamers. This week I am on the road, but we are bringing you guys Kickstarters with dinos, dinos, and more dinos. 
Featured this week, we have fossils by Kids Table Board Gaming that takes two to four devious archaeologists and lets them do what they do best. Dig up the dead for 45 minutes, as players will be working to unearth fossils by moving dirt patches and uncovering what's underneath. Players' finds will help them collect sets or perhaps just hinder other players' archaeological digs in this 3D game that starts at $52. Speaking of those lovable little murder birds, we have Tiny Epic Dinosaurs by Gameland Games that takes ranching to a whole new scale as one to four tiny dino ranchers try to make it big by breeding perfectly safe meeple-sized dinosaurs for about 45 minutes, as players will be placing their ranchers to complete contracts and, of course, keep those little buggers fed so they don't get hangry and break out in this worker placement game that starts at $20. Now for other things that went extinct, Rome and Roll by PSC Games brings you the political landmines and city building of Rome to your table for one to four senators, as players will be drafting dice, calling in some of those favors from the gods, drawing roads and buildings, all while maintaining the peace with a heavy hand for 60 to 90 minutes in this roll and write style game that starts at $37. Lastly, we have my serving of cuteness for the day with Calico by Flat Out Games that has one to four crazy cat people stitching up patterns in quilts to, of course, lure in the most adorable sleeping kitties for 45 minutes as players will be laying tiles each round to create patterns to fulfill particular quilting goals by adding buttons to their quilts for points or scoring those cute little kitties in the set collection game that starts at $29. Thanks so much for joining me this week, guys. If you want to know more about any of the Kickstarters you saw here today, then join me at gloryhound.com as we talk about all these Kickstarters in depth and if we would back them or not. It is a live show, so you guys get to comment and tell us what you think. And other than that, I will see you guys all next week. GMT, I'd be a moron not to include this game. Obviously, Combat Commander Europe. Okay, relax there, Freako. You know, I'm, I'm flipping out because when, when I was young, I used to play war games when I had more time, you know? Oh, Pa, the guy from No Enemies Here, he was real once. What the heck is that face? You, you remind me of your mother. When she drinks half a demijohn of wine and she does her imitation in a bathing suit of Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> I'd love to see that. No, that's not what I mean. I mean, I'd love to see that. Let, let, let's just go on. So, <clears throat> this game, Combat Commander Europe, brings me back to the old times when I was 15, 16 years old because it's a card driven game. You actually need a move card to move. If you don't get a move card as you're drawing cards and you're allowed a certain amount of hands per faction, he means a certain amount of cards per hand per player, right? Whatever. You don't move! So they call that the chaos of war because stuff can happen in war. Look, I've been playing long enough and I've been studying history here and there to know that there are difficulties in war, obviously. It's not like in a movie where, you know, you're aiming for the guy and uh, bombs are blowing all around you and you're all still no problem. You know what I'm saying? If bombs are blowing all around you, they blow out your ears. You pee, you don't hear anything. And you get shell-shocked and you're all stunned and stupid. Ah! Nebby, I think I hear your mother calling. So just like for you, your opponent needs cards to do certain actions. He can't shoot if he doesn't have the fire card. So there's a new hand. He's got his fire card and you've got your move card. So you're gonna move, but hold on a second. He's in a building with a heavy machine gun and you are coming out of the trees and you're gonna move forward. So what, you're, you're gonna hero it? I don't think so. An MG42, which is a German machine gun in 1943, shot 32 bullets a second. Your hamburger. Some cards you pull out called event cards. Well, you gotta do the event. And the event here is Sniper on F1. And if you're on F1, pew! Also, replayability is insane because of the cards. It doesn't stop there. There's Combat Commander Pacific, Mediterranean, Battle Packs number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The rules are just a little tweaked, but it's all the same. Plus, Combat Commander Resistance. Your resistance fighter in France. GMT, Combat Commander. If that's all you buy, you're good for life. I'll see you next week with more GMT.
Bo po! Hi, 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 hi! Wah, wah, wah. Player stereotypes. This guy that we're going to talk about today is called the anti metagamer. We've talked about metagamers in the past and we've kind of talked about them in a negative light, but also a positive light because, part, for me at least, metagaming is part of the fun of board games. Now, if you take it too seriously, uh, then you start getting bent out of shape and that's not good. But remembering what one person did to you in one game and then trash talking about it in the next is the kind of metagaming that I'm talking about. And I really enjoy that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. This guy that we're talking about today is the guy that does not enjoy any of that at all. Does not like table talk. Does not like um, doing things that the rules don't really say you can't do, but also doesn't say that you can do. Um, we talked about... Uh, uh, you're starting to make me think I, I, I am this guy because if the rules don't explicit... Okay, keep going, sorry. No, 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 no. What, no, what, what I'm talking about is like... Because you rub someone a lot. <laughs> sure. Um, then it's us. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, here's the thing. We we were playing. The thing that came to mind when I was thinking about this. The thing that came to mind is when uh, when we were years ago. I know exactly the situation. It's Age of Empires. Yes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That is insane. I don't know. You guys, I don't know what you're talking about. What happened? Explain. All right. What playing, happened was we were playing Age of Empires, which yep. is not a negotiation game. Correct. Sam attempted to turn it into one near yes. the end, where he basically said. He was trying to make some sort of deal. I'll buy this tile if you buy that one. Make it wasn't a, there was no goods trading place. He's just saying I'll do this if you do that. It was only table talk. And the guy at the table was not pleased with that at all. Very much not pleased. Very much not pleased. I didn't really care one way or the other at the time. Nowadays, I would probably argue against it because I don't think it's a negotiation game. Sure, I get it. And also, I want to just disagree with Sam. But everybody at the table, uh, granted, it was only a three-player game. No, but it was four. No, it was four. There was? Yeah. Who I, was the four? I can't remember a lot of stuff, but I remember games. I don't now, remember the other guy the was just kind of there. There was two people. They showed up at the hotel. We went there instead of going to a concert, which we could have gone to, and we played this game yes. as teachers came in and out watching us play this game. Yes, that's correct. And it happened. It was at a, it oh, happened I'm sorry. It this, was at a teacher's it conference. It happened this week. I know it happened this week because that conference is going on yes, right, right now. now. Yeah, it it happened this day yes. five years ago. There you Boom. go. Boom. Don't ask me what my kids' birthdays are, That's a are, steel though. trap right there. Actually, I know that, too. About something. Yeah, something. really. Come on. Bro. But anyway, back to what we're talking about. That was the one thing that kind of sparked it because this happens a lot. Now, it gets glanced over. I have been that person sometimes where where uh, somebody's trying to do something that is really going to hurt me. The rules specifically say that you can't. It doesn't specifically say that you can't do it, but it feels like you shouldn't be able to do it. And I've sometimes, not always, but sometimes I've kept my mouth shut. And I said, okay, go ahead, do it. Because more often than not, we're in a situation where we're playing with with you know, people we just met and, and that type of stuff. And you got to kind of just go with the flow sometimes. Don't be such a hard nose. If you're in a group of friends, it's more likely that you're going to be a hard nose about it because you play games with them more often than not. And on top of that, you have the relationship to back up the hard nosedness, meaning that it's not going to really hurt. I guess. Sense? Yeah, it does. Um... <clears throat> That's an interesting question. What can you do and not do that the rules do not talk about? You know what I mean? I feel like... There's I a, love that quote. I feel like I am this guy then because, I mean, granted, at the end of the day, What about it's pointing things game. that are good to other people and will hurt you? Like, we're playing a game. I'm not trying to negotiate with Sam, but it's his turn to go. You're going to go after him, and I simply say, if you do that, you hurt Tom. That is table talk, right? Yeah, and that's that table is a talk. kind of metagame. No, 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 I get that. I'm saying I'd, I was specifically talking about the things that are not specifically in the rules. That's only a part I of it, I have though. a big problem with that particular. I agree because with that's, that. If, 
there's a spirit of the game and just the rules don't say a lot of things. The rules don't say you can't flip the board. The rules don't say you can't karate chop somebody. Right. But that's obvious things you can't do. <laughs> You're a weak man. And why would you collapse towards the towards the blow? Come on now. No, it, was, it took a second for the blood flow to stop. That's right. And then it just, it just it. collapsed. Um, so I'm always really if someone says, well, the rules don't say I can't do this, and it almost always, in these situations, it's negotiation. Yes. Or trading. Yes. And it, like Monopoly, for example. Well, the rules don't say I can't sell everything to him for a dollar. I don't remember what the situation was that was going on. Were, were we conspiring against him? It seems like that's because why else, especially if no, no, it, 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 it did no benefit to him. And so he was opposed to it. Um, I don't remember if it was me or the fourth person that you were doing this with. Um, but you were saying, I wanted to, to do this thing, and he was opposed to it. Um, this guy is really good at games. Yeah. He then came to Dice Tower Con, and we played Mage Wars, and he whooped me up and down the wall. <laughs> I remember that. Um, I haven't seen him in a long time. But anyhow. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think a light touch when it comes to... Yeah. To doing stuff that the rule book does not mention at all. You, you table talk, fine. Trying to extrapolate something that is not there, that's too much. Yeah, and I think it's important to kind of get a read on the spirit of a game. So yeah. I agree with you there. I sure, there. I don't mind sometimes playing with group people and I, who cares. But I'm also thinking, not is this person new, but how are they affecting everyone else at the table? Sure, right. It may not bother me. I might be like, eh, but if there's some other people and it's ruining their fun, that's not good. Yeah, that's true. I don't run into this that often, actually. No, but it does happen. Um, I mean... I have a very specific friend who does this a lot, but I haven't played games with him in years, and he's only been on the podcast the first year. But, um... No, Joe did this all the time. Joe I was would be waiting like, for you to say it because I knew like, you were talking well, about Well, the rules don't specifically say. I was like, <laughs> well, yes, but... <laughs> Joe was always, uh, and don't get us wrong, we love him to death, but he was always trying to squeeze every bit of advantage out of something that just was well, not Well, this there. was also 15 years ago, Yeah, Joe. it was. I'm yeah. sure he's, he, he would not do the same today. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah. I don't think I'm ever going to use this term, though. <laughs> I don't think I'd ever be like, you're an anti-meta gamer. Well, no. Like, yeah, like, it's, why? That's my fault. I, was that a slur? I didn't come up with a <laughs> pithy, you know, Title for this one. I apologize. Can I offer one up? Sure. Dork. <laughs> <laughs> no! I wouldn't say that's pithy. No. But it might be fitting. I think it's very pithy. It's short. It's quippy. All right. Let's, let's move on. We okay. got more segments. Play them. <laughs> everybody. Hello, we are Ryan and Bethany. From Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. All right, well today we're going to be talking about Hit Z Road. But before we do, let's bridge the gap between health and board games. All right, well this week at work, I had one of my friends kind of, uh, I asked him to hold me accountable. I said, hey, next time you see me uh, overeating or getting a few extra things from the vending machine, um, bring it up to me and just let me know that, hey, remember, we're trying to make better choices this week. Um, so I think that's a really good idea for people who are wanting to, to be healthier is just to to get some other people involved. It's way easier to do that with someone than it is to do it alone. All right, now back to Hit Z Road. Hit Z Road is a game where a kid traveled across America during the zombie apocalypse and he created a game to talk about his experiences. Not only that, but he created the game with all the bits and pieces that he could find along the way. Yeah, there's these kind of decks of cards and bottle caps that he uses tokens. So that's what the cardboard chits in this game represent all those things. I think that's a really neat aspect. I really like that this game is a zombie game that really isn't that gory. We literally counted it out, and there's only five cards in the entire game that are somewhat gory or scary at all. And so I really like that you can have a zombie game that isn't all just like blood and guts. <laughs> yeah, I think this has a really cool story element to it, not only in the background, but also as the game goes on, things get harder and harder. You know, resources are more and more scarce. There's more and more zombies. And I really like that aspect of the game. If you'd like to hear our full thoughts on that, go ahead and check out our YouTube channel. We are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. You can find us on YouTube and on Facebook. All right, well, this is Ryan, and I'm Bethany, encouraging you to play games, live healthy, and create moments. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. Hey, guys. I'm back from Mental Health Minute, and I'd like to talk about mechanics that we don't like. 
There are tons of mechanics out there, from worker placement, to area control, to engine building, to puzzle building, anything you can think of. And for example, I really don't like area control. Not a fan, it does nothing for me. But I do have some games back here on my shelf that have a little bit of area control in it, even though it doesn't dominate the whole game. Now why is that? Why do I enjoy that when it's only a little sprinkle of it? Sometimes a heavy dose of something is too much. You don't want to put too much cream on your food because then you just get rid of the flavor. And for me, if you have a game that is all about something and it's just slammed in and slammed in and slammed in, it can be too much. But it can also be the opposite. Sometimes you can just not have, you can just put a little bit in, a little bit in, and it's fine. It tastes fine. We can get through it. But sometimes you just put a little bit in it and you barely notice it's there. So games have a really interesting balance between mechanics and how they're used and what they're used with. Now, are there any games that you really love, but you hate one of the core mechanics in it? But for some reason in this particular game, you like it? What is that experience like? Do you even notice it happening? Or is it just something that you overlook and say, hey, I enjoyed this game, so that's really all I have. Some people have that problem also. So leave that in the comments below. Do enjoy your breakfast. All right, everybody, welcome back to 10 for 10 Classic Edition. We're going to be playing you fellas facing off against each other. Oh, I'm classic. ready. You good? Uh, oh, it's back to. So I'm going to put these out. These are all films that have done uh, relatively well at the box office. They were from uh, top, you know, top list. tired of losing the co-op game against us. This is the way yeah, that was right. Like. And these are, like I said, they're all movies that have done well at the uh, in the box office recently. But I don't care about how much money it made. I'm going to ask you guys something else. These all have, as does pretty much every movie released in the last, um, like to point I don't out know, that a few years. of these movies suck. I'm just saying. Well, that's what I want you to figure out. We're gonna be uh, basing these on their Rotten Tomatoes score. <laughs> oh boy! Oh! And you, oh! you want the high oh! ones. Let me in. On this one. All right, you want the highly rated Rotten Tomato scores for these. You want your opponent to have the lowly rated. Rotten Tomato scores. I also have three characters here. Um, let's go ahead and pick. Uh, can you guys rock, paper, scissors against each there other? Ready? Rock, <laughs> paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sam. Go with the rock and stay with the rock, baby. Can you smell? Where's the rock? Right there. He's right there. <laughs> yes. All right, Sam. So uh, here is humans. your choice. You can either take one of the characters, which I'll explain again briefly. You'll take one of them, and you get the first pick. Now, yeah. Or you let Tom do that. You get the two leftover guys. Oh, it's different. Okay. So the guys are this gentleman over here, the middleman. Which, At has, the end, which has never worked. <laughs> he has never worked, but it's always been you, though. Maybe <laughs> Sam will, will get it. The middleman here at the end of the round, after you guys have organized your cards, you'll put him on a card. And if that card is in the middle five of the pack, five the or five six. or the six, you get a bonus five points. All right? We got the investigator over here. You will one time be able to look at a card. Which Sam often takes and then never uses. And then this one you'll use to only sort four of your five cards at the end of the game. And if they are in order, you'll get a bonus five points as well. Now, the Rotten Tomatoes is based on a conglomeration of critical and users. No, it's no, just, just critics. critics. It's they, just They critics? have an audience rating, sure. but no one uses that as oh, okay. a... Uh, this is just uh, for the I knew they had an audience rating. I didn't know if their final score had anything to do no, with it. No, this would just be, uh, yes, an average of the uh, critics' reviews. An average of the critics' reviews. That's right, a percentage. What would you uh, like? You want to go first, or you want to take two guys? I'll, I'll, I'll let... Um, you also, obviously, you can see what's out here. That might sway your choices. So we want the highest rated movies? Yes. Okay. One of these days you got to switch it and make us like the worst All right, the what? worst. It's the same thing. I know. Th this <laughs> guy's better. the middleman. What were these guys again? I forget. I'm sorry. This guy here lets you uh, sort only four cards at the end. Okay, and then... And he lets you peek. Peek at one guy. Okay, one, one thing. And in fact, you can use this whenever, even at the end of the round. If you never used them throughout, 
and you want to peek at the end before you sort them, you can do that. That makes okay. them better. Okay, 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 okay. Um, I'll let, I'll let him go first. All right, Tom, you are first then. Pick a guy and pick a card. Who would you like? The middleman. <laughs> Every time. What a dork. That hasn't worked. See? What is I it? just gave you the two. This is, pop, this is a powerful combination, That is man. a powerful combination, though. All right. Uh, my first pick, I'm going to take Hellboy yes. and give it to Samuel. Okay. There you go, Sam. That, don't look at it. That's your first pick. I believe thing. that may be one of the best movies I'm ever sure made. I still haven't seen it yet, though. All right. Sam, you're up. What do you got? That don't guy forget. showed up in Saturday Night Live. And at the beginning, he was talking about things he did. He's like, yeah. I did Hellboy, too. And some people clapped. He's like, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, no, thank you. All right. You are getting Mortal Engines, Tom. All right. Your I'm going to take Jumanji. Jumanji. I'm going to keep Jumanji. Welcome to okay. the jungle. Sam, you've got The Meg, Justice League, and Pacific Rim, the sequel, Uprising. Hmm. Don't forget, you guys are going to get each five cards. <laughs> yep. But he only needs to put four of them in, so he can take a garbage one, too. Yep, 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 yep. But it still counts for count points. for points, yeah. It'll just be easier to get the five-point bonus. I feel like I know which of these is number ten, but that's about the extent of it. I don't want to just league. All right, then you get Pacific Rim Uprising. All right. Sam, the mag, or Ready Player One. What would you like? Or give to Tom. I enjoyed both those movies, actually. So did I. Yeah, yeah. Those the Meg was good popcorn. The Meg was kind things. of stupidity, but it was an entertaining movie. Also, make sure you're looking up at the <laughs> top of the pyramid. I know. Just making sure. I it know. is random, so. I know, I know. I don't want the Meg. Oh, All right, Tom, snap. ready player one or Thor Ragnarok? Well, I'm going to take Thor Ragnarok, and then Sam gets the other three. Yes, he does. All right, guys, so now, Sam. I'm going to use this guy. You can look at one of them. To look at one of them. Make sure um, Tom doesn't see it. Yeah. This is another powerful combination is this guy and the middleman. Oh, good point. <laughs> I would never take the four, I think, to let that happen. Right. All right, now these guys are going to be sorting these, trying to get them in order from the highest number to the lowest number. Highest number is the worst rated That's game? That's the best rated. The best rated, yeah. okay. That would be the 10 is the best rated one. That and would be the guy, highest percentage. This guy allows me to only do four, right? Yeah, you can just ignore one while you're sorting them. You'll still score them all. Hmm. But if they get them all correctly placed, they'll get a five-point bonus on top of the numbers on the backs of these cards. And uh, once he's done, Tom, then you will be able to put out your middleman. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> Come on, you got to get it the one time. This was actually, I would not have gone with the middleman for a topic that uh, would be a little too hard You're to right. control. You're right. And this one, I'm pretty sure I know one and ten. The rest, I don't know. Well. But I might even be wrong on that. That's I might, true. That, like, there's two here that ah. I think are so low rated that I think between the nine and ten, I, I feel like I know the two lowest just because they were so Ravaged by critics. Right, that's um, uh, that's likely correct, Tom. This is highest, lowest. That's fine. However you want. I have no idea about this one. All right, so that one's this, staying put. I could see this being. Hey, let's just switch them so they're in the same order. Okay, we'll do it your way. So highest. I, I was wondering why you were. That, followed by that, and that's the highest lowest rate. Highest to lowest. Yeah. Okay, I got just it. this. <sighs> Where's that going, Tom? What's the middle? What are the middle? You got two chances, man. He could, he could, he could put it on this, right? He could. I'm not putting it on that one. I'm I feel guessing. like that one. That, I'm guessing that that's ten. I'm, I think the one you mean. The one, the lowest one. Okay. And I, it's either that or Hellboy. I'm thinking possibly as well, but. Yeah. <laughs> that the emoji and, movie that just got so beat up. I remember that has a seven percent rating on <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes. Wow! I'm always amazed by that though. Like, why no movies have a zero? Like, there was one guy went and was like, "It's pretty good." I liked the emoji film. <laughs> All right, Tom, let's see what you got. Come on, ten, 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 ten. Welcome down to the land of the That nurse. sucks. All right. I I already failed. You did? Yeah, I thought. Oh, you did. That's correct. I, yes, that's right. All right, you're good so far. <clears throat> come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, oh, so close. Oh, 
Come on. Oh, if that's four, then I messed up because there's no way these are three and two. The Meg was six, really? The Meg was six. Ah. And that was three. The Meg has a 46% rating. And uh, Justice League has a 40. Oh, my word. I didn't know the critics disliked it that much. That's where I messed up. I, I, I should yes, have Yes, you needed to switch after. those, right? Yeah. That would have been it. Oh, Hellboy was number oh, two. That would have been it, Sam. <laughs> well, you thought that maybe there was a lot of backlash against there the was. last. But that wasn't from the was critics. Less. And there was less like, with with. I thought there was less with Real Player One. Here's which the thing, I thought right? That maybe that could make it a ten. The disparity in these between the the audience and the critics is not usually that large. For the Last Jedi, it's massive. I believe the the viewer score is around the forty percent mark. The critics gave it a 91%. Yeah, I remember the critics gave it a really high score, mm -hmm. and then there was a backlash from the, the, the users. It's still fairly divisive. In fact, 40%, I would have figured it was closer to 50 Yeah, it's pretty low. I'm, I'm, I'm estimating that. Well, I highest, like it. So the whatever. highest is Ragnarok at 93%. Mm -hmm. So, guys, neither one of you got any bonus scores. But he definitely won. But definitely. Tom has the 10, the 8, and the 6. And you have the one and the two. Right. I was just trying not to get that emoji because <laughs> I well, ended up one. at the very top of the pyramid, also. So yep. you, you As know, you soon as I came sure out, I you. thought, what could be lower than emoji? <coughs> but then I knew that. What was the percentage for Hellboy? Hellboy is seventeen percent. Hmm, much better. That's well, low. you saw it, right? I did not. I did not see no, it when I found out it was that bad. From it, and he's a Hellboy fan. That's yeah. really bad. I like the actor. <laughs> I don't. You don't like him in, in Stranger Things? Well, which guy are you talking about? David Harbour. Yeah, the guy who's the sheriff in Stranger Things. Okay, well, I like I don't I don't like how he did Hellboy. I'll put it that way, just uh -oh. from the trailer. Well, all right. Well, it doesn't matter. All right, yay! all right. There you go, guys. Let's move it. This is Roy Cane. And this is Hey Do. And this is from Easy to Epic. Where I talk about an easy game. And I talk about a game that's a little bit more epic. So I recently played Awkward Guess, which was a deduction game where you're trying to find out who was the murderer. It looked pretty intimidating to begin with, so it was actually really easy to play. Um, once you got started, you're just collecting the clues and trying to put it together. It's like an advanced version of Clue, is how I felt anyway. And uh, I enjoyed trading the cards around and trying to hold on to those clues, like the big one that like revealed it all, you know. Um, but it was really fun. I didn't win, but I had a good time. How about you? Yeah, Awkward Guess is definitely awesome. For me, I'm going to stick with that whole deduction theme and say Battlestar Galactica. You're trying to deduce who the other Cylons are, but also trying to figure out how to get the Battlestar all the way back to Earth. You're like working around a ship, trying to take out all sorts of like enemy Cylon ships that are popping up everywhere, but there's a Cylon hidden among you, and you're not quite sure like who it is, and sometimes you figure them out, you want to like throw them in the brig, but then sometimes they go to like the, the, the bad guy ship and start messing things up. Definitely an interesting, huge, sprawling, epic deduction game. Not super simple, but definitely a lot of fun and great with that whole deduction, trying to figure stuff out with that hidden trader mechanic. Well, this has been from Easy to Epic, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hiring and sending demons to work for you? As long as you can pay the cost in Demon Worker, coming up. Hi everyone, it's Stella. So, Demon Worker is basically a worker placement game. It's not a new game, so some of you may already have played it. After playing it, we a little bit surprised of how simple the rules are, but how tight and replayable and good the game is. In the game, you start with drafting the six demons you'd like to try to hire. You start with two measly humans working for you already. On your turn, you place your workers one by one onto a space so you could do various actions like hiring demons to work for you, getting resources and turning resources into points or other resources. Your demon cards are basically your engine building to points and each has special ability like getting certain resources when you go to certain locations. Each one usually has costs you must pay to put it in play then cost to send them into worker placement space. The challenge is 
how competitive the worker placement space is. You can still go to where other players go, but paying two food tokens for each player already there. And resources generally pretty tight in the game. Player with the highest evil points wins. There are secret goal cards to score more points by giving up certain resources. Also, workers worth points if you can pay them at the end of the game. It would be a good beginner's game to try this one, but you can also devolve more into strategy. I love the artwork. Game is pretty compact as well, although it does need some table space to play. Well, thanks for watching. We are on the Dice Tower How to Play videos at Maple University on YouTube. See you next time. What's up everyone? My name is Melissa McCack and this is Smashing Buttons and Slamming Cards. This is a segment where I talk about a video game I love and I connect it to a board game I love. And this week, I want to talk about Marvel Heroes Omega for the PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. Unfortunately, you can no longer play this game. But you can play DC Universe Online if you're a DC fan, which I actually am. But I always had a lot of fun with Marvel Heroes Omega. I played it back when it was called uh, Marvel Heroes 2017. But pretty much you uh, got to play a whole array of different characters, right? You choose one of your characters uh, from the Marvel Universe. They have their own special abilities. You can play as a hero or a villain. And you just go throughout the game uh, completing quests, leveling up, and things like that. And uh, it, a lot of times had special events that happened based on the movies that were coming out, which was always really cool. But I would like to connect that to Dice Masters. So Dice Masters is sort of a CCG or maybe a DCG for a dice, collecti dice collectible game where you can build your own team of heroes or villains, mix them up. Uh, it's not just for Marvel, you could use DC characters as well. But I always have so much fun. You play against your opponent and you try to whittle down their life points. Uh, they start with 20, you whittle it down to zero. And it's just such a blast, right? It really brings out that comic book flair for me personally um, and getting to play with all sorts of my favorite heroes like Spider-Man and Iron Man, all that stuff. Anyway, uh, I feel like Dice Masters doesn't get enough love personally, but I don't know, I've been really liking it. So that's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. All right, I have a problem. <laughs> What's the problem, buddy? No boxes showed up yesterday, other than this very thin one. Is but that, I have. A, are I, you a member of the Quality Book Club? I don't know what this is. So this is not. It's a pop-up. A book. game. I have a game we can open up to. We should. Are you okay. opening this on camera then? Wow, well, I'm gonna look. It says Dice Tower. What if it's some sort of particularly flat hat? Oh, it's a calendar. We can look at a calendar. Sure, why not? It's Scott King's 2020 gaming calendar. Oh, okay, that. cool. There's that. Oh, Let me look sorry. at that. Put that on the camera. Okay. <laughs> I do like I do like the meeple thing there. That's funny. Okay, whoever says it first wins something, what right? What is that? That's Stick New it around New York. To yeah, but you New read York. it. Yeah. Where? It says it across the bottom. Don't look at the bottom. Right there it says it. Oh, I can't even read that from over here. Okay, go. Uh, you ready for the next one? Yeah. Fireball yeah. Island. <laughs> <laughs> That's cheating. That's called cheating. All right, do it again. Wait, are you looking? Uh, I don't know what that is. I don't care. Keyflower. Yeah, that looks right. Yes, it is. I like that one. Uh, Welcome to. <coughs> you read it. No, I didn't. No, no, I, I know that game. Mm hmm. CO2? No, no, that's that drop I water drop game. Uh, Petrichor. No, I didn't read it at all. <laughs> you never even played Petrichor, you <laughs> cheater. That's Dinosaur uh, Island. Yeah, the uh, totally rad game. Yep, yep. Root. Yep. I am Root. <laughs> Pantone. Uh, That's a weird choice, though, for a picture, I think. Why? It's visually... Not that far. That's that my strange. That's my least favorite of the pictures. That's a San Juan, right? San Juan, yes. <laughs> wow. That's old school. <laughs> All right. Oh, what's that one? In the forest. Into the, oh, it's that hidden forest. That's cor mysterious incorrect. forest. Don't read it. Was it Mysterious Forest? Something I don't remember. Something? Shadows in the Forest. Shadows yeah. in the Forest. Uh, oh, that's Coimbra. Yes. What's that? It's not a game. Yes, it is. Evolution? Yes. 
<laughs> All right. Well done. Those are good pictures. Those they are. are Scott, pictures. Scott takes good pictures. He did the background for him. This is light. from Garfield Games. So we haven't opened this one yet, so I figured we would because this is one I would. I'm trying to figure out from the back of the box how they fit all the components into this thing because it looks like there's a ton. Well, I'll let Sam keep opening it because I'm. That looks like Michelle Pfeiffer or someone. Who does she look like? I don't know. Gotta say, I'm not a huge fan of the art. Nope, I'm not either. <clears throat> anyway, rule book. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but, well, I mean, but there's a lot Sam, of text here. This is my favorite part. Blah, blah, blah. This wow, that's not a short rule book, though. There's no, it's not. That's what I'm saying. A lot there's of stuff going on. A lot of text, on. and there's a lot. Well, maybe of it's a really involved game. All right, then. let's see these characters. All right, so Rosalind Ashford, sir. All right. Naira Soul. Is Naira Soul standing backwards? Uh, yeah. It looks for like the it. the picture, yeah. Um, Looking over her shoulder. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> Sable Lissetti and Troy Sullivan. Are you really reading all these? Kickstarter backers. Lysias James. That's probably true. Uh, Akira Hope. I like this guy Don in uh, Game of Thrones. Guatama. Or Guatama. That is a guy know. from Game of Thrones. Better oh, this is what I love when you get oh. to punch out all these pieces, and then you're not sure that. if you need to keep them or not. Right. You don't. Okay, so this is why the game fits in this box. This board <coughs> looks bigger on the back. Yeah, it does. I wonder, though, this. I wouldn't mind if it was a bigger board. We'll have to find out. I thought there were aliens. There are. Here they are. There's your first alien. Zakaro. Okay. There's your next alien. Leela. I can't read it. That Lyra. artwork is kind of cool. I kind of like that one. You like that one? You know uh, what it looks like? This artwork looks like those apps where you do a color by numbers. I don't use those apps. You've never seen those yeah, yeah. Like line drawing them. apps? Or is that Drayek? Drayek. Drayek the Destroyer. It's a first person token, I bet you. First light token. Fast, it's called first light. <laughs> so these are... More like aliens. There's aliens everywhere. What do you complain about? That artwork I'm not so sure How much about. you want to say those are bad guys? Uh, yes. That's Have not you seen very Star much Wars? Of course. Woo! Nice! Hey, there's an insert in this. A nice looking insert. That's true. Is that your insert? That's a nice insert. Every time. What? Is that your insert? That's a nice insert. Every of course. Time. Is that your blank? That's a nice blank. Yes. Have All right. Some. These cards are like different Every things. <laughs> they are cool shield. lightning bolts. Are those your lightning bolts? <laughs> oh my those word! Are nice lightning bolts. See you know what I mean? See, you do it too. So I don't want to hear it. Help me. <laughs> I don't want to hear it anymore. Wait, what is this one? Water. Water. Or something. Wait, are those water tokens? Yes. Yeah, droplets. You what? have to use it to play this game. Somebody, you're like in really, really uh, you hurting have to need use for it a necklace. To play this game. I'm, I'm in need for water droplets for barrage because the water droplets that came with it. Remember I showed you those little bead, bejewel things? You can't pick them up. Yeah, but these belong in this game. Right. And we need it. You to want play water this droplets. Game. What do you think these are for? If I play this game and find out that you don't need all these water droplets, poof, they're out. Okay. That's thievery, cannibalism of the highest order. <laughs> of the I can't steal order. from one of my games put in another game? No, what's wrong with you? <laughs> uh, there's a lot. Alrighty. Ooh, look at that. That's a, that's a Wookiee, man. We'll be back it looks nothing like in a, Wookie. a little less than three hours to do our top ten games we're looking forward to coming out at Essen. We'll see you then. Thanks for joining us for another Board Game Breakfast. Yeah, y'all. Thanks for all the folks who came in live. Don't forget, Two conventions coming up, Dice Tower West and Dice Tower East. I would talk about Cruise, but it's mostly sold out. I think there's a few rooms left for that. Um, but this game will be in the library, probably, because Seems I think we put almost all their games in our library, Garfield games. So. Yeah. Cool. Until next time, I'm Tom Basso. I'm Z Garcia. Sam Healy. See you on the flip side, folks, and take care. Thanks for watching Board Game Breakfast. Tune in each week for your daily dose of gaming goodness with Tom Vassell and all the gang. Until next time, I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching Board Game Breakfast, a Dice Tower production. Sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., an amazing place to buy board games. Cool stuff, in stock, at CoolStuffInc.com.